Hi, and welcome to MicroStrategy's Mobile App Developer Academy. This course is entitled Introduction to Transaction Services for Mobile Apps. Data input and write-back capabilities, also known as closed-loop business intelligence, extends a mobile app real-time decision-making capabilities by enabling users to take immediate action on those decisions. While mobile apps help users monitor an organization's activity, Transactional mobile apps empower them to move the business forward. For example, a transactional corporate request center mobile app could allow users to review and approve requests in seconds that would otherwise take days and the use of a computer. From this app, you can review all items requiring action, check against the current budget allocation, approve or deny requests at the tap of a button, and reconsider ongoing requests by asking for more information. Transactional apps can promote more effective client relationships by facilitating discussions such as wealth management. No longer does the client need to take time out of their day to drive to the financial advisor's office. Instead, the advisor can simply take their mobile device and meet wherever is most convenient for the client. Together, they can review and update the client's personal information, view the performance on their portfolio, make any adjustments, and instantly generate recommendation that the advisor can execute directly from the mobile device. Along with capturing signatures, scanning products, attaching images, managing orders, scheduling appointments, and more, Transaction Services takes the power of mobile apps to a whole new level. Let's look closer. Let's take a closer look at how Transaction Services lets you embed right back functionality into mobile apps. Transaction Services is supported in MicroStrategy 9.2.1 onwards and requires that users have report services, web professional to configure transactions, and desktop designer to define the transaction reports. Transaction reports are written in the Freeform Editor and can use SQL for relational databases and XQuery for web services to write data back to existing ERP systems or databases. It's important to remember that transaction reports can only be defined and edited through desktop, while configuring a report services document with transactions can only be done through web. Transaction services is only visible from a report services document or dashboard, not available directly in reports, and are executed in express mode, in web, or on an Android or Apple mobile device. When creating an app for transaction services, when and how the data is being executed is important. In traditional data design, the contents of the source system often lag the transactional data by hours or more. This is often accepted because of the realistic expectations of data processing and the desire to have consistent, coherent data. But in some situations, information needs to be as fresh as possible and requires real-time data processing. There are three approaches to consider. The most common approach is to write the data back to a transactional database, then use an ETL process to update the system of record. This approach guarantees data integrity by ensuring that all transactions are either all completed successfully or all canceled successfully. For example, a banking customer wants to move $500 from their savings account to their checking account. This involves two separate transactions. If one of these transactions succeeds, but the other doesn't, the user's accounts will not balance at the end of the day, and there are inconsistencies in the bank's database as a whole. Using a transactional database ensures that either all operations in a transaction are completed without error, or none of them are. However, using this intermediary transactional database means that the source system is not always up to date, relying on the scheduling of an ETL process. So any queries made before the ETL process is performed will return out-of-date data. In the banking example, users are aware that transactions are not immediate and that their accounts may not reflect the correct balance until the next day. This brings us to the second approach, writing transactions back directly to the source system. Though this may not always be a recommended approach, there are certain instances where it may be necessary, such as multiple concurrent users needing immediate, up-to-date access to data. Let's say that you are coordinating a team of technicians to troubleshoot hardware for employees at a large corporation. As employees check in with you, you can document their information and what issues they are having, 
and then assign them to one of your team members. That team member will see a list of all the employees that they need to work with, be able to read about their issues, document any action taken, order any parts, and then close out the issue or possibly reassign them to another technician for additional support. For this process to work, everyone must have up-to-date information available from his or her device. Daily volume change as well as overall data volume along with latency, transformation, and query requirements should be, all be taken into consideration before utilizing this approach. The last approach is when using the MicroStrategy multi-source option to aggregate data from multiple relational data sources. This functions similarly to the first approach with the transactional database used to aggregate the data, then write back to the individual source systems. Once the design of your database is determined, you have to determine the best approach for writing back your transaction, writing a query or calling a stored procedure. Calling a stored procedure is the preferred method as they are typically written by a database analyst who specializes in database programming and is familiar with the data and can use native functions of the given database. They provide a single point of maintenance as they are created once in the database and then can be reused across different reports and applications. Any updates or modifications then take place in a single stored procedure versus the need for a MicroStrategy developer to change the SQL in multiple reports and possibly in multiple MicroStrategy environments. Also, they can perform actions or a series of actions including transformations, calculations, aggregating data from multiple sources, and calling other procedures to return a single value or result set. They can improve performance by pushing the bulk of the processing to the database instead of within the application. And they can enable error reporting by capturing the status of a transaction. This status can then be leveraged by query reports to display whether a transaction was successful or not. Now that you have an overview of the technical components of transaction services, let's look at how the front end of a mobile app using transaction services is designed. As you learned in user-centered mobile design, the key to good app design is not only understanding your users' needs, but also spending the time to define a solid workflow and framework before app development begins. For this course, our use case will be a mobile phone app for performing retail store inspections, and the data model has been provided for us. Upon entering the app, it should suggest the closest store to my current location, while also giving the user the ability to search for other nearby stores. For the selected store, the user needs to be able to conduct a new inspection and also review any previous inspections performed. When designing for transaction services, it is important to understand what screens will contain your transaction interfaces, where in your process the data needs to be read in and where it needs to be written back to the source, and what tables are affected. If utilizing the photo uploader widget, you must also consider the point in the process where the image files are being written to the file server and where they are re being retrieved for viewing. Now that the workflow and storyboard has been created, it's time to design each screen. For the purpose of this course, we are just going to look at the Enter Inspection screen that contains the transaction. As we learned in the Transaction Services Interfaces for Mobile course, we know that transactions can be executed from either a grid or from multiple text fields on a panel stack. For this app, the organization requires that a store is rated on key performance indicators, quantitative information about the store is captured for reporting purposes, photos can be attached to further qualify the inspection, and there's also a place for the user to enter any additional information about the inspection. The first input we want to add to our screen is the photo uploader widget so that the user can take a picture of the store during their inspection. In the photo uploader widget course, we know that this is achieved by adding a grid to the document. Next, we add a panel stack and text fields for each input to be captured. We then configure a transaction for both the photo uploader widget and the text fields on the panel stack. We add a submit button that targets both of these as well. Now we have built everything for the user to complete their store inspections. Regardless of your application needs, Transaction Services enables your users to instantly traverse from business insight to business action without ever needing to return to a desk. And that's a wrap for this MATA course. 
Introduction to Transaction Services.